Votes have been tallied and the results are in. It's time to crown the best match of the year, best duel of the year, best pin of the year, and the outstanding wrestler, plus so much more on the first ever Fanco Wrestling Awards. So let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. <laughs> Hello wrestling fans, my name is Josiah and welcome to the Fanco Wrestling Show. I have my mustache curled as best as it can be. I have my best suit on because it's a very special show. We asked you guys what were the best college wrestlers, best college matches. We asked you to fill out a poll and now the results are in. We're crowning all of these champions this week. I'm going to run down each category and tell you who won I don't necessarily agree with all of them, but I thought it was a lot of fun. The first category that we have is the best match of the year. Now, of course, this is just the regular season, and there were so many amazing matches uh, this entire season. But just in the regular season, let's go. The nominees are Nick Piccinini versus Spencer Lee, Mickey Phillippe versus Dayton Fix, Nick Lee versus Joey McKenna, Alex Marinelli versus Evan Wick, Mark Hall versus Ahid Valencia, and Anthony Ashnault versus Matt Kolodzik. And the winner by a result of 36% of the vote, is Nick Piccinini pinning Spencer Lee. What a match this was in the Oklahoma State versus Iowa duel earlier this season. And Nick Piccinini upset number two Spencer Lee and wowed the crowd. It was an amazing match and one that nobody will ever forget and we could get in the years to come. The next category is match of the year at the NCAA tournament. There were so many amazing matches. Now let's see who won. The nominees are Spencer Lee versus Nick Piccinini again. Nick Suriano versus Dayton Fix in the finals. Max Murin versus Mike Carr. Yanni Diakamahalas versus Dom Demas in the quarterfinals. Joey McKenna versus versus Nick Lee, which is a rematch from the dual meet and Big Ten championships. Jason Nolf versus Hayden Hydley. Alex Marinelli versus Joe Smith, which was a round one matchup. Mikhail Lewis versus Alex Marinelli. Zahid Valencia versus Mark Hall. Giant rivalry. And Max Dean versus Miles Martin. And the winner is Nick Suriano versus Dayton Fix in the 133 pound finals. This was a match that has people stunned because at the beginning of the year these two wrestled and in the dual meet and then this was just like a crazy long match that went down to referees decisions and the finals match also went to a lot of referees decisions and could show uh, move changes for, uh, for next year as far as headgear and other things so this was a great match next category gnarliest takedown of the year and there's only one person that I can give this takedown to this year who made his debut at Penn State this year and had a phenomenal takedown in the Lehigh versus Penn State duel and this has to go to Roman Bravo Young for hitting a crazy flying squirrel and put him as an athlete to watch early in the season and at the NCAA wrestling tournament. He hits all these crazy moves and I love to watch him wrestle. Congrats RBY. The next big category, biggest upset of the regular season. The nominees, Sebastian Rivera upsetting Spencer Lee. RBY upsetting Luke Pletcher. Austin DeSanto upsetting Nick Suriano. Parker Crotman, who was unranked, he beat Matt Kolodzik of Princeton. And then Nino Bonacorsi, who upset Nick Renan. And the winner is Austin DeSanto versus Nick Suriano. This was a great match in the Iowa versus Rutgers duel. It was a last minute take down that gave DeSanto the ultimate victory over Suriano, who was the reigning, the new 133 pound national champ. Next category, biggest upset at the national tournament. This is the biggest place that we can watch upsets because you never know what's going to happen come March and lots of people are crowned champions because of upsets. The nominees, Jack Mueller upsetting number one Sebastian Rivera in the semifinals. Makai Lewis upsetting Alex Marinelli. And then Makai Lewis upsetting Vincenzo Joseph. We also have Chip Ness upsetting Shakur Rashid. Max Dean beating Miles Martin. Thomas Lane, the number 21 seed, beating the number five seed, Jacob Warner. And the number 28 seed, Sam Stoll, beating number five seed, Mason Paris. And the champion here, the winner is, of course, it's Makai Lewis. Lewis upsetting Vincenzo Joseph. Now, I tend to disagree. I think it was a bigger upset for him beating Alex Marinelli, who was undefeated on the season. However, Vincenzo is the reigning, two-time reigning national champ, and Mikhail Lewis, a freshman, upset the big dog. What a match. Congrats to Lewis from Virginia Tech. Next up, best 
match, best post-match celebration. And this, you know, this is a guy who hits all of these crazy celebrations, and I just love to watch him wrestle, but I like to see what he does after the match. And this has to go to Mark Hall, whenever he won the Big Ten Championships and brought out his recorder. And this was not only great because of the recorder and because of the interaction with Flow Wrestling, but because whenever he did bring this out for the celebration, he was able to then get Flow Wrestling to donate $500 to Thon. Not only was this a great celebration, but it was for a great cause. And moving right along, what was the best pin of the year? There were so many great pins, and some of them were upset, some of them weren't. But there are three nominees in this category. First up is Nick Piccinini beating Spencer Lee, pinning him 4 minutes 55 seconds. Bo Nickel pinning Colin Moore in the first period in a minute 38. And Daniel Lewis beating Zahid Valencia in 4 minutes and 15 seconds. He pinned him. The winner here, again, it has to go to Nick Piccinini versus Spencer Lee in that match. What a pin that rocked the arena. That the Oklahoma State needed that win early on and it just kept the momentum going in that match. This was a 51% of the vote. You fans voted 51% of you that this was the pin of the year. Next category is the best team dual meet of the season. The nominees, Penn State versus Ohio State. Penn State won that match 28-9 to at Columbus. Next up is Iowa versus Oklahoma State, who won 27-12 to Oklahoma State. That was a phenomenal match and arguably one of the best of the year in these nominees. And third up is Ohio State versus Michigan, which Michigan pulled off the upset, beating Ohio State 19-17. to But there's only one winner, and that has to go to Iowa versus Oklahoma State with 44% percent of the vote and Oklahoma State beat Iowa 27 to 12 remaining undefeated on this season there were so many great matches in there you had Dayton Fix versus Austin DeSanto you had Nick Piccinini versus Spencer Lee as well as many other guys in the rest of the lineup that just made this duel phenomenal and rocked the arena in Oklahoma State Next up is the sickest flow award. Now, I asked you guys, what were some categories that you'd like to see in the Fanco Wrestling Awards? And one of these was the sickest flow award for the best hairstyle. And there are three nominees in this category. Bo Nickel, with the crazy blue hair that he had towards the end of the season. Ronnie Bresser, who always has a nice flow. And Chance Marsteller, with the sick white hair. The winner here is Bo Nickel. Not many people can pull off the blue hair and look still like a dominant wrestler, but guess what? Bo Nickel died it for the postseason, and he still remained a national champion, three-time national champion. The next award is another fun one that is the Most Mobbing Wrestler Award. Well, this has to go to the Most Mobbing Wrestler Anthony Ashnault from Rutgers, who is a first-time national champion. Ashnault, let's see what he thinks about this winning this award. Schnaulty be mobbing. And there you have it from Anthony Ashnault, most mobbing wrestler. Next up, the most sportsmanship award. This goes to the guy who had the most class, winning or losing. Well, this guy didn't have any losses this year, but he did have a lot of class in his wins, and that has to go to Jason Nolf. He knows he's out there destroying a lot of these guys, but especially when it came to the national tournament, you see him wrestle Hayden Hiley in the semifinals. Things go very controversial, and he gets a lot of he got a lot of crap for it. I mean, I don't think it was either of these wrestlers' fault necessarily. It was a close call. He comes off the mat. He says, I actually think that Hydley had the takedown. And not many wrestlers can get away with that in an interview and still look like a total sportsmanship class full guy. And that has to go to Jason Nolf. And the next up is the worst rule change of the year award. Guess who gets that award, guys? Hands to the face. Hands to the face was the absolute worst rule change to college wrestling. I mean, really, you can't touch a guy's face, and that's what wrestling has come to nowadays. This has come to decide so many matches this year. Uh, it ruined multiple matches, including Spencer Lee losing the Big Ten Championships because of a hands to the face call. And let's also not forget about the unreal Suriano versus Dayton Fix match earlier in the year, which also had another close hands of the face call in the national championships. In the finals, this rule needs to be sorted out. And it was towards the national championships come March, but it was still very, very ridiculous. 
the comeback wrestler of the year award. This is goes to a wrestler who maybe had a couple of losses this season, but guess what? He came back. He came back and avenged those losses and came out on top. There are three nominees in this category. Nick Suriano, who avenged losses to Austin DeSanto, Stefan Micic, and Dayton Fix. Spencer Lee, who avenged his loss to Nick Piccinini. And the third nominee is Zahid Valencia, who avenged his losses to Daniel Lewis and Mark Hall from earlier in the season. This award has to go to Nick Suriano. Not only did he lose a couple of matches early on, which, you know, a couple of those were close, but he came out on top. He learned from his mistakes, beat DeSanto at the Big Ten Championships, and also beat uh, Fix and Micic in the National Championships, and came out on top as Rutgers' first national champion. He grinded it out this entire postseason to win and come out on top. I just didn't quit. I, I, didn't, I didn't quit through this whole journey. and. It uh, came down to not quitting. Rookie of the year. The freshman rookie of the year. There were so many freshmen this year that took everybody by surprise. But who is the real rookie of the year? Well, let's look at our nominees. The nominees are Patrick Glory, Vitalia Rouge, Dayton Fix, Roman Bravo Young from Penn State, Dom Gimis, Austin O'Connor, Makai Lewis of Virginia Tech, Mikey Labriola, Jacob Warner, and Gable Stevenson of Minnesota. These guys are... All of them had great seasons and great national tournaments. A couple of these guys came out and uh, did very well at the national championships, but there can only be one winner. And that has to go to, of course, Mikhail Lewis, the freshman from, from Virginia Tech who beat the number one seed number four seed and the number two seed at 165 pounds he beat Marinelli, Wick, and Vincenzo Joseph to become a national champion. Now he only had two losses on this season but he still came out on top and showed that he's a freshman to reckon with and next year he'll be a force to reckon with once again. Everybody other than uh, my teammates, family, and uh, coaches the fans thought that I was like an underdog. I didn't think I was an underdog. I just thought um, that people didn't have the chance to see me wrestle. Who is most likely to repeat in 2020? Well, let's look at the nominees. Spencer Lee at 125 pounds is a just a sophomore. Nick Suriano, a junior at 133 pounds from Rutgers. 141 pounds, we have Yanni Diakamahalas, who is a two-timer just like Spencer Lee. At 165, Mikhail Lewis, the freshman, looking for another title. At 174, Zahid Valencia, the junior out of Arizona State. And if he's able to get a medical redshirt, Anthony Kassar out of Penn State. And your winner is, with 40% of the vote, Yanni Diakamahalas, the sophomore from Cornell University, who won his second national championship this year in great fashion, beating Joey McKenna. Is he able to hold on to the title? Well, he had very close matches this year, including with a freshman, Dom Demas, who will give him some very tough matches come the future. But he is voted as the most likely to win next year. Congratulations. And before we get to our Coach of the Year and Outstanding Wrestler, we want to take a moment to uh, remember the wrestler that we lost this year in Eli Stickley from Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Badgers. Let's pay him respect in this in memoriam. These final two categories are big ones. The coach of the year and outstanding wrestler of the year. There were so many great coaches this year that just show, and what, what is a great coach really? Well, a great coach not only wins dual meets, but he's also able to get those wrestlers, get the wrestlers on his team to win big matches, win big championships, and 
win essentially a national title. Now, let's look at the nominees. Out of Rutgers, Scott Goodell, who had the first two national championships in school history. Rob Cole from Cornell, who had two NCAA finalists. Scott Moore out of Lock Haven, who, had, who was EWL champions this year and had a couple great guys at the tournament. Kale Sanderson, of course, 14-0, 50 straight dual meet wins out of Penn State. Brian Smith from Mizzou, who was undefeated until he lost to Oklahoma State in dual meet. And then John Smith out of Oklahoma State, who was undefeated this year as a team and had a couple national finalists. But there can only be one winner. And with 54% of the vote, even though Scott uh, from Rutgers won Coach of the Year at the national tournament, the fans voted Kale Sanderson as Coach of the Year. And I kind of have to agree. You know, this is a guy who... He just breeds champions at Penn State. 50 straight dual meet wins, Big Ten champions, and national champions by a huge margin. Congrats to Kale Sanderson on winning Coach of the Year from the Fanco Wrestling Awards. And finally, our last category is the OW, the Outstanding Wrestler. The guy who came out on top to win a national title was undefeated the entire year. There were only four guys. There were 12 guys who went into the national tournament undefeated four came out and these are who they are yanni diakabahalas who went 29 and 0 with a 59 percent bonus point victory at 149 pounds anthony ashnall from Rutgers, who was 32 and 0 with a 59 percent bonus point victory he had the most wins out of any of these guys at 157 we have jason nolf out of penn state 31 and 0 won his third national title with an 87 percent bonus point victory at 197 pounds bo nickel out of penn state 30 and 0 with a 90 percent Bonus point victory, earning his third national title. And your winner is Bo Nickel out of Penn State with 57% of the fans vote. Bo Nickel, he had 90% bonus point victory. I mean, guys, that is absolutely unreal to win 90% of his matches by a bonus victory. He had... 18 pins on the season, three tech falls, and a bunch of major decisions. Bo Nickel is your OW and the winner of the Fanco Wrestling Awards in this category. And that does it for this Fanco Wrestling season. But guess what? There's still so much coming. So make sure you subscribe and watch these upcoming videos in the weeks to come. Thanks for watching.